Lockout tagout must be used while servicing and maintenance. But where did the concept of lockout tagout came from? And who made these regulations? We have already learned what is lockout tagout and why is it so important. Now, would you like to know what is OSHA and what is OSHA's lockout tagout standard? What is its scope? And where does lockout tagout applies? Namaste. I'm Dr. Nalini Gulati. Let's start learning. With the rise in technology, the energy release incidents have also increased over the years. The widespread problem of the failure to control the hazardous energies provided the basis for the lockout-tagout rulemaking. It was in the year 1989 that OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, an agency of the United States Department of Labor, introduced standard 29 CFR 1910.147 as the control of hazardous energy to establish lockout tagout compliance requirements for the general industry. Lockout tagout is basically the process of controlling hazardous energies during the service and maintenance of machinery and equipment. Now, what is the scope of OSHA standard 29 CFR 1910.147? This standard covers the servicing and maintenance of machines and equipment in which the unexpected energization or startup of the machines or equipment or release of stored energy could cause injury to employees. This standard establishes minimum performance requirements for the control of such hazardous energy in the general industry. The scope of the standard does not cover construction, agriculture and maritime employment, installations under the exclusive control of electric utilities for the purpose of power generation, transmission and distribution, Exposure to electrical hazards from work on, near, or with conductors or equipment in electric utilization installations, and oil and gas well drilling and servicing. Now, what is the application of OSHA standard 29 CFR 1910.147? The lockout tagout standard applies to the control of hazardous energy during servicing or maintenance of machines and equipment. Normal production operations are not covered by this standard. To define when lockout tagout can be applied and when not, one must clearly understand the difference between service and maintenance and normal production operations. Activities such as construction, installation, setting up, inspection, etc. are defined by OSHA as service and maintenance. Whereas, normal production operations defined as the utilization of machines or equipment to perform its intended production functions are generally not covered by this standard. Now, differentiating between maintenance and normal production operations is not always easy. Certain tasks such as minor and repetitive adjustments are considered normal production operations when they are integral to the use of the equipment for production and they do not increase the risk of injury to employees. Means that the work can be performed using alternative measures which provides effective protection to the employees. Other activities such as lubrication, cleaning, unjamming, 
making adjustment or tool changes, etc., although integral to the use of equipment, would be considered service and maintenance if employees are exposed to greater or different hazards which they did not come across during normal production operations. If activities expose employees to the unexpected energization or startup of the equipment or release of hazardous energy resulting to injuries, they should always be considered service or maintenance and lockout tagout must always be applied. So servicing and maintenance which takes place during normal production operations is covered by this standard only if an employee is required to remove or bypass a guard or other safety device or an employee is required to place any part of his body into the danger zone during maintenance which could result in an injury. Now, the question is, where does this standard not apply? This standard does not apply in two conditions. Work on cord and plug connected electric equipment for which exposure to the hazards of unexpected energization or startup of the equipment is simply controlled by the unplugging of the equipment from the energy source and by the plug being under the exclusive control of the employee performing the servicing or maintenance. Hot tap operations. Now, what is hot tap? It is a procedure which involves welding on a piece of equipment under pressure in order to install connections. So lockout tagout standard does not apply to hot tap operations involving transmission and distribution system for substances such as gas, steam, water or petroleum products when they are performed on the pressurized pipelines and that too only if the employer demonstrates that the continuity of the service is essential shutdown of the system is impractical and documented procedures are followed and special equipment is used which will provide proven effective protection for the employees. So, employee protection is of utmost importance. With this, we are clear where this standard applies and where it does not. In this video, we have started with OSHA's lockout tagout standard, its scope and applicability. If you have found this information useful, please click the like button and if you have any related questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section below or email us at loto at the rate safetylock.net. We will be glad to answer all your queries. See you soon in our next video. Thank you.